Hey Wampers, and welcome to easy 3D modeling on your iPad. With our beta release, we have enhanced experience with Womp on iPad, and in this video, I'll show you how to use it. In a browser of your choice, you go to beta.womp.com. We can recommend Chrome, it usually runs the best there. Now, here we are on the Discover page where we can find all the creations that were published by the community. We can navigate it using swipe gestures or also use the pen. At the top right, you can switch between light and dark mode and also find your profile where you will see all your published projects in a portfolio or gallery view. Clicking on the logo at the top left brings you back to the Discover page. Now let's come to the creation part. To start a new scene, we click on a new file at the top left. There we are greeted by the iconic default cube, which showcases our SDF based 3D. Blending primitives with each other or subtracting them which makes 3D actually intuitive, easy and fun to use for anyone. We can use one finger or our pen to rotate around our scene. Pinching our fingers lets us zoom in and out. Holding two fingers on the screen lets us pan in different directions. We can simply click on primitives by tapping them to move them around freely using the gizmo. At the bottom, you will find a bar with buttons that we have specifically designed for iPad use, which brings the experience to a whole different level. You can move the buttons anywhere you would like on the screen that you are most comfortable with. With the arrows, we can undo or redo a step really quickly. The symbol right next to it lets us duplicate an object. Trash can at the right then allows us to delete primitives. We also have a shift button which enables us to rotate our shape in 45 degree snaps, while the option button allows for equal scaling. And with that we have some of the most important functions at the click of a button with your fingers while modeling with the pen. Another really cool little trick that the iPad allows for with the new buttons is drawing with curves. When the option button in our shortcut bar is activated, a new curve point is automatically created whenever we move the curve further, which makes it an even smoother process than on the desktop version. Now let's create a little design together and make you more familiar with the modeling in WAMP. First thing, at the top right in our scene menu, we can change the backdrop to set the mood and then delete our default cube to get started. Now why don't we start by creating something simple at first, like our Apple Pen here. We start by grabbing a curve primitive from the top bar menu. It always comes with two points at first, you can click on them and delete one to start from scratch. When we have a primitive selected, we can choose its material at the top right. Let's choose a nice white. Next, we duplicate our curve point and drag it out. We then scale point one down from the center to create the tip of the pen. Then we duplicate the second point and drag it all the way to create the rest of the pen. Naturally, the curve will be smooth between its points. By clicking on the curve in the scene list at the left, we open its settings. Here we can change the roundness to one, which helps us to get a sharp transition, which is just the right thing for the tip of the pen. Now, the last thing we need is that little split at the tip. For that, we click on area one 
and grab a Q primitive from the top bar menu. By selecting the area, we make sure that it goes straight to the bottom of it. We then scale it to be very thin using the buttons at the side of the gizmo. And then turn the shape negative in the menu at the right. Now we subtract from all shapes that are above it in the scene list, which is our curve we made for the pen. And here we have it. To scale it smaller or rotate it, click on the area to select all of our shapes and then scale it from the center or use the corner buttons for rotation. Next up, I'm going to start on creating a cute little chicken character. For that, I'm starting out with a new sphere-based curve. Um, we're scaling it up a little bit because it's quite tiny in comparison to the pen. At the top right, we can then choose our material again. I'm going for a light yellowish tone with adding a little bit of roughness so it's not all shiny. When we click on the curve itself, we enter the settings of it at the right. Here I'm increasing density, lowering group strength, and activating the mirror on the X axis. Now if I drag my shape to the right, it will be mirrored to the other side. And that way we can create characters a lot faster. I'm starting with maybe the head, then clicking on point one to duplicate it, dragging it down and making it bigger for the body. With just two curve points, we have already a decent <laughs> simple body shape and can go on from there. I've then just copied the same curve and now use it to create those little hair or floating stylized elements on top that makes it really cute, I think. Then just copying that banana <laughs> curve kind of shape here. And also just rotating it a little bit. I'm then going on and grab some basic cylinders, also have the mirror on the x-axis activated, round them up completely and then also choose our material, just giving them a nice black for the eyes here, reducing the shininess a little bit again, then copying the same cylinders, rotating them in a 90 degrees angle by holding down the shift shortcut, scaling them to be flat, those are going to be the glasses of the chicken. We're going to duplicate our material and choose a maybe blue for the glasses and a bit of metalness maybe. Just bring them into position. And then I'm going to copy our shape here, scaling them a little bit smaller, activating the option button to equally scale them on both sides. Turning it negative and adding a bit of cooping from the inside to smooth it out. Now I'm bringing the eyes to the bottom of this area so they are not affected by the negative. Next up I'm taking our body curve and duplicating it, dragging it to the right for the mirror. But then I'm turning it off to create two individual wings. First off I'm clicking on the curve to turn the curve into a cylinder based curve. Now I'm clicking on point 1 to edit the shape. First rotate it to the side, scale it thinner and also add roundness in the menu at the right. This also helps to create smooth curves. I'm scaling this a lot smaller and bringing it to the beginning of where the wing is connected to the body. We're then duplicating our point, dragging it out, making it a little smaller, another point another uh, smaller point and also bringing it up a little bit to create that kind of shape. Then we can just easily copy the whole curve over and rotate it so it really looks like this little chicken is holding the apple pen which is really cute I think. You can also switch from the iPad version seamlessly to the desktop version and continue your project there. Which is what I'm going to do for this character. So from here, we are basically using the techniques that we've already learned. I'm using a curve in combination with the mirror to create those little cute legs that they have. Um, this time we just use an orange material on them. 
If you've created one of the foots here, for example, you can also just copy that curve, rotate it to the side and do that once more, maybe scaling it a little smaller. And then we have some really cute little feet for it. Next up, I'm creating a chair that the chicken can stand on. For that, I'm using a basic cylinder, then added some roundness to it. Now I'm just copying the same cylinder, this time stretch it really long. We could make a four leg uh, chair really easy if we just activate the X mirror. And then we can also actually just activate the Z mirror with one single uh, cylinder then we can create the legs on all sides. For the Z mirror we just need to bring it over to the other side. If your shape is invisible it's most likely you have it on the wrong side of the plane. I'm then just adding some basic shapes like cubes, spheres and cylinders to indicate our design uh, with the topic that Womp is now on iPad so you can now create in 3D on your iPad. I think the basic shapes are quite fitting for that. I'm also creating some quick sparkles using rounded cylinders and just grouping them together. Really easy, really quick, really cool looking. And then I also quickly want to show you that we can easily equip materials. So we select the area of the chair here and then we can browse through our super materials. For example, we can go to the wooden category. You see how many awesome materials you can find there. And you basically find that for almost anything you can imagine. At the right then we can also play around with its settings, for example increase the texture scale or the texture height. WAMP also features ray tracing, so you can do all kinds of glass things. For example we can create this soap bubble material to the sphere here and have a really nice glassy ball. I have then just played around a little more with this design, added some more materials and made adjustments and also added some text. You can do that by grabbing it from the primitive menu as well. For this example, I'll just show you what we can do with it by duplicating the text we have here. At the right, you can type something in. We can, for example, say WOMP now on, and then it says iPad on the text below. Um, you can change the size, so we make this quite a bit smaller. We can change the font. You can also upload your custom fonts, which is really cool. Maybe we'll use a pixelized kind of font. You can also change the letter spacing and all those kind of settings that you need for text. You can also custom size it. And when we're then happy and finished with our scene, we can extend it further by changing the lighting. At the right, we can choose our environment light, for example, which changes a lot on how the shadows and light and colors are displayed also increase the brightness or change the rotation from where the light is hitting our object. When we are done fully happy we can publish our project at the top right to our community. You can decide your thumbnail, title and copyright settings etc. Or you can export it in form of an image or a 3D model for printing or your games or even create a camera animation. We hope that you guys are excited to also start creating on iPad now. We can't wait to see what you will make with it. And with that, thank you so much for watching and keep whomping.